Hi everybody, this is John Abel. It's uh, April 6, 2013. This is the latest video of my uh, Jajin setup. It is a replication of what uh, JL Naden has been doing on his website. Uh, and I've just been trying to optimize this and, and try to come up with a, uh, a range of uh, good, uh, good amounts that this machine will function under. Uh, what I currently have set up is uh, an optimized uh, coil. Uh, what I did here is this is my original bifiller coil. You'll see just the board here. But if you turn it upside down, you'll see what was on my other video is actually the bifiller Tesla coil. This is a 10 and a half inch coil with 18 gauge speaker wire. Um, and uh, it's about 23 wraps around. What I did was I drilled a hole in the middle and then I just restrung uh, the speaker wire on this side so I could lay it down flat and uh, so the so the coil is directly touching the glass so it's as close as it can possibly get um, I'm measuring what I have here it went up a little bit uh, it was it was uh, fluctuating in between uh, about 1 and 1.3 before it looks like it went up a little bit so you're, I'm looking at about 1.3 ohms uh, for just for just the pancake coil. I'm going to move this over here and I'm going to show you the equivalent resistance of 500 watt bulbs, nine 500 watt bulbs, um, three sets, uh, each set of three are in parallel but then each set is in series with each other so that's kind of how it's set up um, and and again the resistance stays fairly low it's, it's only three uh, 2.9 up to 3.1 ohms for that. Um, so I have found, I've, I've written down a few different uh, examples of what I was doing and uh, and I've, I've, I've come up with um, somewhere between 4 and 7 ohms is usually a good range uh, to work with in, in, in terms of, of putting together different combinations of light bulbs um, and that is in addition to the 1 ohm for the coil. Um, so what we'll, what I'll do is I'll turn this on and I'll show you how this works. Um, I'll get it as bright as I can. I'll turn it up all the way up to 10 and you'll see that um, that the, the equivalent uh, brightness of this is fairly bright. It, uh, it's lighting all nine of them up so that would be 4500 watts if they were lit up completely. I do hear a ringing sound at, at about setting 8. This uh, induction cooktop has 10 settings and it's supposed to go up to 1800 watts. Um, I did get it up to setting 10. When I looked at my uh, kilowatt, it was only setting at, at about 1400 or just, just above 1400 watts. And they were all lit up as bright as they would go. Um, so I'm going to try that again to sh just to show you. I'm going to set this camera down for a second. Well, uh, let me hook it up here real quick first. And this wire here. And again, you'll see that it's a very simple circuit. There's no diodes in it. There's no power resistors in it, anything like that. It's uh, simply uh, an equivalent resistance of light bulbs tied into the coil sitting on an induction cooktop. And um, I've been using uh, setting 3 as kind of a control. It's the lowest one I can go without the machine shutting off. I'll go down to 2 sometimes with the light bulbs only stay on for about 7 seconds and then it, it turns off. Um, so these machines act a little bit different depending on what electronics have been put inside of them and what rules that have kind of been set up within the electronics. So you might find different behavior depending on what, which uh, induction cooktop you buy. So I'm just going to set my camera down here for a second while I turn it on and then we'll start uh, uh, observing what's going on here. Hold on. Alright. Oh, kind of bright there. But uh, you'll see I'm uh, on setting 3 there. I'm going to try to center this a little bit. Uh, that's about as good as we're going to get. It's not real, it looks kind of uh, bright on, this, on the camera here. I'm going to back up a little bit and then you'll see it's not that bright. But um, 
uh, my camera has to readjust here. Um, it will continue to get brighter and brighter as I go all the way up to setting 10. Uh, and uh, you'll see on, on the lowest working setting here that my kilowatt says 780 watts. And, um, and that, does, that does change depending on, on what you have hooked up to it on setting 3. So it, it is a dynamically changing amount even, even when the setting stays the same. Uh, depending on what your hookup or what what your uh, what your load is, uh, so what we'll do is uh, it will smoke a little bit, but I think we can go up. There's four. There's five. It's getting brighter. There's six. There is seven. Eight. I can feel the heat, and there's nine. I start hearing a ringing noise now within the light bulbs, and they are smoking, and there is ten right there. It's as bright as it can get. Um, I'm going to go back down here. We're going to take a look, and it is at, yes, 1,400, bouncing around between uh, 1,424, 1,422, so about 1,420 watts. It'll change a little bit um, because of the heating and stuff. Uh, there's smoke, um, but touching the coil here um, is nice and cool. Um, I'm gonna <laughs> start turning it down again because of the smoke. Um, but you'll see as I get down to, uh, that is setting, oh, my camera's not gonna work anymore because it's so bright. Uh, but now I'm on setting three here. You see that? back down to setting three and as I hit setting two you'll see it'll only stay on for about seven seconds 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007 and then it shuts off it's 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 almost a given every time it's, a, it's the same exact number every time so um, there's something inside this machine that that shuts it off after seven seconds anyway I just wanted to show you guys that and good luck with your own projects. All right, have a nice night.